So one of the most important formulas in all of algebra is the quadratic formula. Now this is the actual formula right here and I'm going to uh, fully explain this in this video. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So here is the quadratic formula. Now, I pretty much showed you the formula and here it is, but uh, we have uh, these variables B, A, and C. Okay, and now uh, we need to know, hey, what, does, what is B, what is A, and what is C? Well, these A, B, and C values come from this. Now, this is a general polynomial equation written in standard form. Now, we'll see an example of this in just one second, but the A, B, and C values here, well, A and B are the coefficients. Uh, A is the coefficient of the x squared term or the square term, uh, B is the coefficient of the X term or the linear uh, term, and then C is the constant. Okay, so you're gonna plug in these respective values into this equation, do the number crunching, and then you're going to basically solve uh, your quadratic equation. All right, so that's basically what it is, but when do you use the quadratic formula? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So here is a quadratic equation, okay, which is a degree two polynomial, and by the way, this is a big, big topic in algebra. I'm just kind of summarizing a lot of these things. And if you need more help with the quadratic formula or any of these things, I'll give you some specific suggestions here in just one second. But let's just talk about some general things about uh, quadratic equations. Now, the first thing that you should know is that you'll always have two solutions when you solve a quadratic equation. Okay, always, always, always. Now, these two solutions can be either real real number solutions and or imaginary number solutions. So if you're like, I don't really know what you're talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, you know, if you're at the algebra one level, first year algebra level, uh, certainly algebra two and beyond, you definitely need to understand, you know, these type of roots. But anyways, that's the first thing that we need to consider that you always have two solutions. Now, sometimes you can take the square root of both sides when solving quadratic equations. It all depends on uh, the format or the type of equation that you're dealing with. Now, sometimes you can do this, but sometimes you can't. Now here, uh, factor, sometimes you can factor a quadratic equation, but sometimes you can't. Now, if you can uh, take the square root of both sides, you should use this as your primary method, okay? If you can factor, you should do that. Now, there's another method over here called completing the square. You need to understand this, but this is not kind of like a uh, primary direct method uh, typically used to solve, like, let's say, a polynomial equation. You see this, you're like, hey, I'm going to do completing the square. No, uh, it is uh, definitely a very important thing, uh, skill that you need to understand, but it's not a primary technique, uh, generally speaking, to solve a quadratic equation. All right, but what happens if you can't take the square root of both sides and you can't factor uh, your quadratic equation? Well, you have a fallback and you can use the quadratic formula. So you should only use, okay, when do you use a quadratic formula? Basically when all of the techniques fail. Okay, so that is um, uh, basically answers our first two questions. What is the quadratic formula? And when do we use it? So let's go and take a look at some uh, examples and then we'll get into how to properly use the quadratic formula uh, here in just one second. All right, so how about this equation right here? So x squared minus x minus six is equal to zero. Now this is a degree two polynomial or by definition a quadratic equation, right? So x squared, this is a polynomial, we have x's here. And again, I'm talking about a lot of topics that a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. You too, math man, I'm totally confused. This is like, you know, this is why I don't like math. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm just gonna tell you right now, if you're struggling with this, this is a huge topic in algebra and you're only going to see more of this, okay? Especially if you're going to progress into Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus. So check out my full main math courses. Uh, you probably want to start with Algebra 1. Uh, I'll leave links to those in the description of this video uh, if you need some kind of follow-on instruction. 
But let's take a look at this example. x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. So we know we have a quadratic equation. So we're going to be thinking to ourselves, well, can I take the square root of both sides? Well, this uh, has what we call a linear term. So it's not like an x squared is equal to 16 uh, situation. All right, so here, uh, this is like a perfect scenario where we can take the square root of both sides, but we cannot take the square root of both sides here. So we're going to go to our next option, and that is to factor. Well, can we factor this? Well, indeed we can. And of course, you need to know how to factor quadratic trinomials. And this is another big area where a lot of students struggle with. But uh, if you know how to factor, we can see that x squared minus x minus 6 can factor in, into these two linear factors right here. x plus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. OK, so what we have is a, um, a situation where we're going to use something called a zero product property, zero product property because this thing times this thing is equal to zero. So you got two things being multiplied to, uh, together and the answer is zero. So what does this tell you about this or this? Well, one of these is zero, okay, or both, right? You can't get zero as an answer if you're multiplying unless this or this is zero. So we can use the zero product property and set both of these factors equal to zero. And that's what we're going to do. So we have x plus two is equal to zero and x minus 3 is equal to 0, that we solve the respective equations. And here we have our lovely two solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, so x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 3. All right, so this is just an example of uh, using, you know, factoring uh, to solve a quadratic equation. Again, you do not want to use the quadratic formula to solve this situation. Now, you definitely could use this, but that's like, you know, doing a lot of extra work. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at another example, and let's see how well you do with this one. Okay, so here is the problem. x squared minus 4x is equal to 8. Now, if you are really a certified professional in the quadratic formula and solving quadratic equations, well, then you should be able to figure this out and get the solution. So let's see how well you do. If you want to pause the video and work on this for a minute too, that's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and get into this right now. So when you try to solve this, you're going to see that, well, obviously here we have an x term, so we're not going to be able to take the square root of both sides, and we cannot factor either. So this is a situation where we are going to use the quadratic formula. All right, so how do we properly use the quadratic formula? Well, the first thing we need to do is to get this thing in standard form. All right, so what does that mean? Well. Uh, putting an equation in standard form means uh, basically setting it equal to zero and have it written, or basically you're going to write it from highest to lowest power. Okay, so in other words, your x squared, or if it's another variable, y or t, doesn't make a difference. Your squared first, then your linear factor here, uh, this in this case, it's x, and then your number. But again, we're going to get everything to one side of the equation, set it equal to zero. All right, so now the coefficients here are the a, b, and c values. So in front of the x squared is 1. Now, you don't see that, but there really is a 1 right there in front of the x squared. So a is equal to 1. Uh, negative 4 right here is our b. And then our constant value here, negative 8, is our c. All right, so we have a, b, and c. And now, with these values, we can go ahead and plug this stuff right into the quadratic formula. Okay, so you can see that I've done the work right here. Now, a lot of students, a lot of people are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know how to do this. Well, that's, you know, pretty good. But here is the um, kind of uh, where well, I'm going to kind of show you or explain the areas that where students, e even though they understand the quadratic formula and kind of how to uh, use it, they really make a lot of errors in the kind of application of it. Okay, so uh, the first thing that you need to really pay attention to is when you're plugging your values, okay? We have b here, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. When you plug in your values, you always want to use parentheses, okay? So the first thing, of course, now we're talking about how to use the quadratic formula. Uh, so uh, let's just kind of summarize real quick or review. First thing is to get the equation written in standard form. Identify your a, b, c uh, values. The second thing is you need to uh, very, very carefully plug in the respective A, B, and C values 
into the quadratic formula, okay? Just like this. So we have negative and negative uh, minus. This right here, this minus b, a lot of students uh, think, oh, I have a negative uh, a b value, so I don't need this value. No, this is negative of whatever b is. In our case, it's negative 4. So you're going to plug in all this, um, all these uh, variables, the number values for all these variables, and then you're going to double, triple check. You're not going to do anything. Now, I'm kind of giving you a lot of good advice if you're like, all right, I think I'll listen to you, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, you're going to save yourself a lot of pain solving these equations because I've seen this time and time again where students uh, you know, are like really, really good at solving uh, quadratic equations. They rush, and they but they plug in the wrong numbers. They make a little error, and then everything is perfect. The only problem is they plugged in the wrong uh, values, and that can easily happen. So double, triple check that you plugged in the right values. And now from this point, if you're satisfied that indeed I did plug in the correct values, this becomes one big number crunching operation. All right, now... If some of you are saying, okay, I get this, Mr. YouTube Math Man, well, go ahead and see if you can clean this thing up right here and uh, try not to use a calculator. Let's see how well you can handle the number crunching. But uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which is uh, obviously you hitting that subscribe button. Okay, now I got a lot more work here to solve this quadratic equation. But uh, before we get into all that, this is really important uh, for me because I am trying to reach as many people as possible. Now, I know there are millions and millions of people who struggle with the quadratic equation or quadratic or solving quadratic equations in quadratic formula. Uh, and, you know, for me, I want to be able to turn a person uh, that looks like this. You now, maybe they look more like this. They're kind of angry about, you know, I don't like math, you know, especially quadratic formula. Well, I'm trying to find this person so they could be like, oh, this is not that bad. You know, they kind of basically, thank you, Mr. YouTube Math Man. And they can go on their merry way and ace their test. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's what my channel is all about. But I can't grow my channel unless I get people like yourself to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's move on and finish this problem up. So now this becomes, again, one big number crunching operation. So look, we have to be really disciplined and kind of um, what you don't want to do is do too many steps at once. Okay, you can take maybe one or two. I'm going to show you how I did this, but, you know, obviously, you know, uh, with experience, you're going to get better at this. But let's go ahead and start with the numerator. So we got negative of a negative 4, which, of course, is a positive 4 plus minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is what? Negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16, minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. Now, this part, okay, matter of fact, this part of the quadratic formula is called uh, what? Okay, this is a bonus question. It starts with a D, okay? It's called the discriminant, right? Now, that's kind of a side thing. But this part of the quadratic formula, the discriminant, a lot of students get in trouble here, especially with positive and negative values. So this minus b squared minus 4ac, this part right here, do yourself a favor and turn this uh, subtraction sign into a plus negative. I've uh, kind of um, I've seen that this works pretty well for students who make a lot of errors, error, errors excuse me, with the quadratic formula because clearly now you're not going to forget that this is a negative 4. Okay, sometimes students forget uh, with this minus sign. So now you have a negative times a positive times a negative, this whole thing is going to become positive. So you have 4 times 1 times 8, which, of course, is 32. Now, I'm spending a lot of time here kind of emphasizing these little, uh, what may seem like little trivial details, but these things are big, okay? Uh, again, you know, when you have taught math for decades and decades and graded hundreds of thousands of tests, exams, quizzes, well, I mean, maybe not that many, but <laughs> definitely a lot, you see the same errors over and over again, even with students who know what they're doing. All right, so let's go ahead and um, uh, clean up the denominator. Two times one, pretty straightforward. Now, remember, we're confident that, uh, you know, we're doing this correctly, okay, because we plugged in the correct values, and we're just taking it one step at a time. So here is our next step. So we got 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 32 all over 2. All right, so let's continue to move uh, forward because we still got a decent amount of work here. So 16 plus 32 is 48. 
Now, some of you might be saying, well, this looks pretty good. Maybe we are finished right here. Well, no, we are not. We actually got a good amount of work to finish. So we got four plus or minus the square root of 48 all over two. Now, uh, those of you that are algebra students that are going to take quizzes and test exams, you got to really be careful with your square roots and radicals because here you have to fully simplify any square roots like the square root of 48. Okay, you have to look for perfect squares, which again, this is another kind of subtopic in algebra, but an important topic. Okay, we are not done yet by any stretch. So let's go ahead and simplify, simplify excuse me, the square root of 48. So how do we do that? Well, the square root of 48 is equal to uh, the square root of 16 times 3, because 16 times 3 is 48. Now, this is important because 16 is a perfect square, and there's a property of square roots that allows us to take this one big square root of these factors. Okay, so where we have the square root of 16 times 3, we could break this up into two individual square roots, the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, and that is awesome because we know what the square root of 16 is. That is 4. Okay, so we need to fully simplify any radicals or square roots. Well, specifically, it's going to be square roots for the quadratic uh, formula. So the square root of 16 is 4. So this whole thing is really 4 square root of 3. All right, so you might be saying, man, Mr. YouTube Math, man, there's a lot of work here. Uh, yes, indeed, there is. And I'm not going to argue that point. But let's go ahead and keep marching forward. All right, so at this point, we had 4 plus or minus the square root of 48 all over 2. So we did the work here. The square root of 48 is the square root or uh, 4 times the square root of 3. Okay, so this is like a problem within a problem. So now we are almost uh, uh, pretty close to uh, uh, finishing this problem, right? So we want to simplify this because we have some common factors here that we could cross cancel. Remember, you're not done until your problem is fully simplified. All right, so the best thing to do here is to factor out the greatest common factor in the numerator, okay, which of course is a four, because four, if we multiply by one, gets us back to four, and then four times the square root of three will get us back to four square root of three. But when I factor out this um, four, we can see that, oh, two goes into four two times, all right? So hopefully, this is just basic math stuff, basic algebra stuff. So two goes into four, two. And now at this point, this wouldn't be a bad answer, but really what you want to do is uh, use the distributive property and multiply that two back in. Okay, so here is going to be our final answer. So we're going to multiply that two back in. So we got two plus or minus two, or two plus or minus two square root of three, and this is the answer. But what does this mean? Okay, a lot of students get confused here. This plus or minus means there are two um, unique solutions. The first is 2 plus the square root of 3. The second is 2 minus the square root of 3. But why, you know, write this thing out twice where the only difference is plus and minus. We just kind of put this little plus and minus right there. All right. Now, this was only one little example of the quadratic uh, formula. And we talked about a lot. Matter of fact, I wanted to make sure I covered a lot of things here. And, uh, you know, this was just a summary, right? But this is by no means a full, you know, all the full instruction and all the practice that you need in order to master, in order to become a certified professional expert in the quadratic formula. You're going to need this formula over and over again, not only just in Algebra 1, first year Algebra, you're going to see it in Algebra 2, you're going to see it in College Algebra, Pre-Calculus. This is going to, It's going to be with you as long as you take math. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.